Hey everyone, Bernard here with another citizen vlog and it's another moments in time and uh, look at this gentleman he may disappear off the screen in a minute if my screen save is not on for very long Mr. Ian Bowyer the forgotten man, the, the, the guy the boo boys used to boo in the late 60s, early 70s yeah, we're going to have a look at Ian Bowyer today. The, the, yeah, he was the sort of forgotten man. But he got his own back on City, didn't he? He got his own back by having a quite a successful career later on, as a, you know, uh, after leaving City. And uh, it'd be nice to know what would have happened, perhaps, if he'd stayed and stuck it out and uh, stayed at City. Anyway, please, if you're new to this channel, please uh, push the old subscribe button. That'd be great. Tell your friends about this City channel. And, you know, quality, not quantity on subscribers at the moment, but it's a little hidden gem. I'm quite proud of it and I hope you hope you enjoy it anyway. Please push the bell notification so you know when these little vlogs are coming out. And make sure your notifications are set to public. Yeah, Ian Bowyer, I mean he was uh, born 6th of June 1951, so obviously he's birthed around about this date that this little vlog's going out, because I mean I've got featured the, well, we've got two dates, we've got um, the date he left, 11th of June 1971, is when uh, Ian Bowyer actually left Manchester City, 11th of June 1971. And his uh, first sort of significant date was his first appearance, which was November the 16th, 1968. So a little bit under three years. Um, but as I said, he, he came just after the league title. He was there, he was obviously as, as a young player, he was there, but obviously just after the league title season. So... In 1971, he actually had enough. He'd had enough of City. And I, don't, I don't blame him looking back at um, what he was. He was a target for the Boo Boys. He was the forgotten man. He's one of my, one of those that I always saw on the team sheet when I was going as a young lad and didn't didn't overly get excited about. It was it was like a, a backup, and you can see that from some of the couple of the bits I've got here that I'm going to go through. Yeah, I mean his first appearance for, as uh, in the first team was against uh, Newcastle. This was uh, November the sixteenth, nineteen sixty-eight. So obviously it returned to Newcastle after the obviously back in May was it when we went and won the league title there. But obviously this was the re first return back, and you could sort of tell because he, he was sort of not not that season. He I, he, he play, I think it was this. I think he had a bit of a break after this. I think he only played about six or seven games all season in this sixty-eight, uh, sixty-nine season. So you can understand certain things like the team squad that's obviously shown in the Newcastle programme. The team squad doesn't have him on. Um, you look at the the writing about him, you know, about the players, the City players, he doesn't feature on there. But that, that was par for the course that season. I've, I've looked at another couple of programmes and he's not really there. There's no real mentions at 68-69. And we'll get to the 69-70 season where he's more prolific in a minute. Even, and even then it was a bit hit and miss whether he got a comment or not to be honest with you i mean his first goal was in march the 15th 1969 but as i said he didn't play many games he uh, he literally had a handful so it was a, a win against queen's park range and a home win 3-1 uh, march the 15th 1969 was his, was his first goals and obviously that was sort of much 68 69 as i said he probably had a six or seven appearances nothing much at all i say he was a bit of a, a bit of a an afterthought, but 69-70 was quite prolific. He played quite a lot of games in 69-70, so you do get the odd thing. Uh, we've got a squad picture, 69-70, uh, uh, from the Spurs game. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur, 13th of September 1969. So this is a, one of the early games of the 69-70 season, actually... Ian Bowyer does get on, finally get on the team picture from 1969-70, but I'll show you something in a minute. I mean, this obviously the 69-70 squad. And it's a lot of the times in those days, they just used to have really the first 12 on. They didn't have all the any any sort of reserves or anything else. So that was like a, a main team group, if you like, from 69-70, which uh, Ian Bowyer here. Do you see the? You know, does he look the same? Is uh, obviously right on the end, which which is significant in itself, really, isn't it? But, uh, but at least he got it, and he did get a mention in the in the pen picks as well. And uh, just to read what it says, and he compares what what had happened. City have been hit by injuries in playing. Obviously, this is probably why he's getting a place. And this has meant opportunities for young players who would otherwise have had to wait for their chance. Ian Bowyer and Stan Bowles, who was there at the time, are two young forwards who have seized their chance with both feet. The red-headed Bowyer quickly earning a reputation as a goal scorer comes from Ellesmere Port, the hometown of his manager, Joe Mercer. Yeah, so at least he was getting a mention there. I mean, there's a game 
later in the Europe, we were in obviously in Europe uh, that season, the Cup Winners' Cup, and obviously we'd played Atletico Bilbao, obviously at Atleti- and in the Basque Country, obviously when we played them, and um, it's actually getting, actually finally getting a lot of images. You see an image of him running, celebrating there, and just just, just look at that celebration. I'll show you something in a minute, which is it's quite familiar, but. Um, He's celebrating all that Tottenham game, by the way. I think we won it 3 0 at White Hart Lane, which is unusual in those days. It's <laughs> very rarely won at White Hart Lane. And this uh, Bilbao game turns away in, in celebration. I think we drew in Bilbao and we won this home game 3 0 again, I think, on that one. But So that's sort of like the first image I sort of stumbled across looking back at some programmes. Um, and then there's also one with some images against United from a, a Lee SSK game in a programme. And obviously, we had a recent derby against United at Maynor, which we won four 0 And although he didn't score, um, he's actually he's actually um, sort of pressured a pressured a goal there, if you like. Paul in Davies saddle under pressure from Ian Bowyer and Francis Lee puts through his own goal. So obviously, there's Ian Bowyer there. That that, but obviously, a four 0 win. There's some great. I, I love. I always love looking at the kit backs in the background. So that's Ian Bowyer obviously in action against United, a great 4 0 win. And as I say, he did, he did play quite a lot of games that season. Uh, the 69 17, he certainly was his most productive season. Um, and obviously, it's, it is the season of reaching the League Cup and Cup Winners' Cup final as well. So it's quite a big, you know, and it, so he was called on quite a lot. But if you look at the at the League Cup, obviously, the second leg against United, this guy's right, and this is, this is per, a copy I purchased. But he actually scored in the 2-2 draw at Old Trafford, uh, Bowyer. He's actually written him in there somewhere. Uh, Can't see it very well there. But on the middle page, as you can see it better, he's actually put a 1 next to Bowyer. So getting in the team there, at least. Getting on the team sheet as well, which I wasn't always in the 68-69 season. He wasn't always getting on there. So obviously, as I say, we uh, we obviously had, having beaten them at Main Road, we drew, we drew at Old Trafford. That meant we, got, we um, obviously got through to the League Cup final and there's another great image with me against Nottingham Forest in a 1-1 draw this is prior to the League Cup final like a, he's obviously missed that one he's obviously missed that uh, that shot going across goal he's obviously but it's a great image I think it's a fantastic image even, even so even though he's not connected with it it just uh, shows you and uh, it was quite a smallish crowd I mean I, I remember looking inside there was um, images of the scoreboard look at the scoreboard there Bowie is not on this but I just thought it was interesting Quite sparsely populated, that, and I just looked at the crowd. There's like twenty-seven thousand there, so even so, they're probably fiddling the figures a little bit again because obviously that's half full. It looks a little bit more than half full, even though even though obviously it was a wet day, so the uh, most people would have been in the kit packs under cover rather than go to the other side. But what interests me, as I said about how we can feel a bit down, is is the actual League Cup final itself. Let's not forget, he was—he actually came on as a substitute. So he was the substitute in this. He came on as a substitute uh, for, um, uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, Mike Summerby came on for a substitute in the League Cup final. But again, they've only shown the squad. They've shown the squad, and I've double checked it. And I've looked and looked. But again, the squad 69-70 don't fit. We saw that one earlier where there's a bigger squad. But this is the League Cup final. It's not on there, so they haven't—they haven't shown that squad. And obviously, it's the squad with the trophies in front. So Ian Bowie is not on there, and even even more more thing is meet Manchester City. He's not even featured on there. So the pen pictures. I mean, he, see, he hadn't he had been playing games that season. You know, he'd been quite, you know, in the League Cup, especially in the, the Cup Winners Cup. He'd been contributing. So it was a little, you know, I, I, I don't blame him. <laughs> I certainly don't blame him. Though, you know, and I, was, and I feel a little bit sorry for him now. Obviously, at the time, I didn't. I, just, I wasn't overly impressed with Lee Boy, but I was only 10 or 11, so what, what do I know about? I don't know anything about football now, so what chance did they have at 10 or 11? So, yeah, it's, it's just funny, isn't it? And he came on. And interestingly enough, did you remember that celebration before they went the goal against Bilbao? Well, I've got an image of him, obviously, of Glyn Pardo, who sadly has recently passed away as I'm recording this and I, please check out my Glyn Pardo tribute as well if you check the playlist wonderful but sadly passed, sadly he's left us now unfortunately but he's celebrating Glyn Pardo's goal at Wembley and you remember that jumping up in the air with his arm and it's exactly the same sort of um, style wasn't it so obviously he gets no points for um, originality on on celebration but there he is again celebrating the Glyn Pardo goal as I said he came on for Mike Summerby and indeed he did come on for um as a sub in the Cup Winners' Cup final as well for uh, I think for Mike Doyle. So 
even so, he said that season he wasn't really <laughs> again. He was missing out on 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 content really, isn't it? you know, on away programs and even home programs to some extent. I wanted to wanted to have looked for him. Uh, we did. Obviously, the season after seventy seventy one was his last season uh, with City, um, and obviously we do have a picture of the Cup Winners' Cup and the League Cup in front of them. So that's nice to see, isn't it? But obviously, Tony Towers, look at his hair, look at his mopper there, there. And Tony Towers on the end there. Um, Ian Bowyer, Tony Towers. Why am I thinking of Tony Towers? Ian Bowyer on the end there. I didn't say Towers before, did I? You know what I mean, Ian Bowyer. I think it's a red hair. I mean, I'm getting confused with the red hair, but there he is on the end. Again, on the end of the row, which isn't great, is it, for Ian Bowyer? But, uh, yeah, forget if, if I've been saying Tony Towers, please forgive me. As a, um, I'm obviously, because of the red hair, I think I'm getting all... So, sorry, uh, sorry, Ian. So, yeah, so at least on that, I mean, this was a programme from the 70-71 season, a game against Chelsea, January 1971. And of course, we did play Chelsea again in the Cup Winners' Cup semi-final, didn't we? And we were a bit struggling. Again, we were struggling with injuries, and obviously Bowie was in the team, certainly in the team for the second leg. Uh, and unfortunately, we lost both legs 1-0, didn't we? So we didn't get another trip to a, a European final. I mean, his last game for City was at home to Tottenham uh, on the 1st of May 1971, a 0-1 victory. Uh, so literally about five weeks later, he moved on to Orient um, and stayed there till 73 when he went. And uh, Mr. Brian Clough saw some potential perhaps that City had missed, you know. Um, there you go, I mean, great. Even even people like Malcolm Allison and Joe Mercer are not prone to not making mistakes, are they? So Ian Bowyer, spotted by Brian Clough, became a really big element in their success of uh, league titles, European Cup wins, League Cup wins. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't think it was an FA Cup win, but uh, so. But you do see that on Ian Bowie. It does mention the Forest time, and they, they do sort of forget that he did win two or three trophies with City, even though. But as I say, even 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 we sort of ignored him. So you can't blame anyone else for for really ignoring him. But obviously, Brian Clough saw and got the best out of him, which you know, in all fairness, from a personal point of view, I don't know. I just remember at ten or eleven, I was never overly impressed when, sadly, Ian Bowie was on the team sheet, etc. But hey. All credit to him, you know, he was far, far, far better than we give him credit for, credit for, and far better than a lot of people looking at those programs, etc., give him credit for. So that was a moment in time. His uh, stats for City between the '66 and '71, obviously signed apprentice in '66. I say he didn't get his first game till November the 16th, 1968. His stats in the league were 42, 42, played 42, eight, eight substitution appearances with 13 goals, which wasn't bad at all. FA Cup. Four appearances with one goal. League Cup, six appearances, two a sub with two goals. Uh, European, The European Cup Winners' Cup, which it would have been there, five appearances, two a sub and one goal. So overall, 57 appearances, 12 a sub and 17 goals. So, hey, you can't be the forgotten man if you've made a contribution like that. And my, my respect to Ian Bowyard, I doff my invisible cap now because, uh, as I say, I, having looked back at Mr Ian Bowyer, the victim of the boo boys and the forgotten man in my eyes there uh, and all credit all credit to him and uh, i'm glad he had that uh, great sort of uh, spell at, at uh, nottingham forest with the amazing brian clough um so there you go oh you enjoyed that anyway please um that was our moments in time mr ian bowyer who left city on the 11th of june 1971 and played his first game for city on november the 16th 1968 made his first appearance you may come off the bench i can't remember that was his first game he played in anyway anyway thanks for watching please follow me on twitter at nostalgia underscore movie or at charles denine denine spelled d-i-n-n-e-n and i'm on facebook at burn denine with links to movie game nostalgia dot, excuse me and movie game nostalgia.com my little website for old and rare dvds movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s and board games as well so if you can find a few minutes to go on movie game nostalgia.com much appreciated visual thumbs up to you hope you enjoyed that anyway let me know in the comments below what your memories of ian bowyer are and uh, yeah if you if you like me were a bit unfair to him at the time but on reflection i think we should show him some more respect don't you anyway thanks for watching what are we going to do with the rest of your day have a great one look after yourselves look after your friends look after your families let's all look after each other and uh, this is bernard hopefully i'll see you all again very very soon for something else thanks for watching bye bye